Welcome to Shred Show, I'm Chris, and this is the internet's most stoked surfboard show. Shred Nation, today I want to start out with a big shout out to those of you who represent where you're from every week and tell us about all the talented shapers on your part of the planet. Most of the feedback that we get from people like you is that you're getting better boards from those shapers that live near your home breaks than you would if you got boards from a shaper who lives 600 miles away who's never analyzed that wave in front of your house. If you live in North County, San Diego, for example, and walk into chemistry, you see an entire range of boards boards built by dudes who surf the exact same waves as you do every morning. Lead shaper and part owner Jason Bennett was one of the first guys to be sponsored by Hurley back when the apparel brand was young. His front side turns are as well known as his shapes around Oceanside Peaks, and he's made boards for pros like Shane Maggs, who you see surfing now, and Dylan Graves as well as everyday surfers like pro snowboarder Todd Richards. If you saw the trestles contest last year, you might remember a scene where one of the most high profile surfers on the world tour chose to surf a chem sled in a few of his heats. Instead of the board, he was paid to surf by the contracted sponsor who pays his living expenses. I first saw this board, the Disc 2, several months back when someone emailed me photos of it. And at first glance, I thought it would be fun at like a 5'7". Then I talked to Jason and I thought it would be good at like a 5'8". But then Jason told me the dimensions he was riding in his Disc 2, and I finally settled on a 5'9". The point is that you you get a lot of insight from talking to the person who makes your surfboards and that's often easiest when that person lives a few blocks away from your house. Look at the foil and rocker on this board and you can see how thick that it stays from the center heading out towards the nose and heading out towards the tail. The nose is really interesting because you can see this beak out here on it, meaning that foam actually comes straight off of the nose before slightly swooping down and imitating the curve of the rocker beneath it. At this angle again, we can see that the rocker stays really, really flat towards both the tail and towards the nose. This foil and rocker combination in this board is our first hint that you may like surfing this board on the lower end of your volume range because this much thickness concentrated across the stringer of such a flat board with a short length makes a higher percentage of this board's foam actively contributing to your floating and planing when compared to a longer board or a board with a more thinned out foil that could put a lot of volume up in the tip of a pointy nose that isn't affecting your ability to plane or float at all. Looking at it another way, this board puts more float immediately beneath both of your feet and chest across the stringer than a longer, more thinly foiled board that would have the exact same volume. Compare this to last week's board and you'll find that it probably has nearly identical thickness at the thickest point of the board, but since this one keeps more of it out towards the tail and towards the nose, without thinning out as much, you can probably surf this board with like an inch less length and an inch and a half less width and probably even a liter less volume. All these elements give this board that balance where you don't feel like you're down in the water ripping into it and you also don't really feel like you're floating above the water. Instead, you're just perfectly right in between the two and the thickness flow throughout this board creates a very responsive feel to your demands for turning because of how all this float throughout the entire outline immediately gives you a response from the water when you push on it as it floats you back and propels you up or down or wherever you're trying to go to. This outline stays elliptical throughout the tail without any kind of a squash happening or any kind of a blunt edge back here on the hull and it also stays clear of any wings that would be placed like right here or right here and other similar shapes like this that you've seen. For this board what that means is it promotes that kind of smooth connected feel to the water without much breakout and release as you would have if this was a blunt edge on a squash tail right here, especially if that squash tail would have as much thickness as this. Flat up in the nose, running into a very slight single concave, turning into a slight double concave, becoming one of my very favorite things, V happening from the leading edge of the thruster fin all the way out to the back end of the tail, rocking it around like that. That V will help this board sit down in the water and flow rail to rail through turns, and it creates a slight impact balance on either side of the V as this right here is the lowest point of the hull and it kind of makes the board want to rock back and forth really smoothly. Feel the rails on the forward third of this board and they kind of remind you of a board that Jerry Lopez would have made for pipeline. That's because of the way that you notice the hull comes flat out from where the stringer is to meet the bottom of the rail right here without much curve happening coming up from the bottom to meet the bottom of the rail at all. Most of the shape in this rail is happening from the tapering coming down off of the deck of the board while the bottom just comes straight off and meets that top curve down at the base of the rail. I think the real genius 
this in shapes like this is the way that they take that popular penny rounded elliptical outline of a step up and compress all that volume down into a board that distributes volume more like a step down. The thing is, since the rail line on this board is so short and because it doesn't get too wide, you'd probably find that this board is easier to keep control in waves up to six or seven feet. And because of the way that the foil stays thick throughout a very relaxed rocker, it's much easier to plane half speed and experience fun in jump waves than you would think. That makes this board one of the rare cases that can be fun in waves knee to a couple feet overhead for surfers ranging from just past beginner all the way up to advanced. I wouldn't call this board one of those drivey, grippy machines that puts tracks on waves like skid marks on pavement, but what you really notice is its ability to zip you from point A to point B really quickly. Kind of like you just look at a spot on the wave and then it zips you right there. Shred Nation, if you are surfing any boards by chemistry, tell us about it in the YouTube comments below. Also, to possibly win a brand new set of your very own WCT fins by Futures, drop a comment below telling us who your favorite local shaper is wherever you are on Earth. Shred Nation, that's it for this episode. We hope the waves are up near whatever river, rapid, ocean, lake, or sewer that you live next to, and we will see you next time on Shred Show. I just said sewer. <laughs>